Hello and welcome to this lesson on the inverse square law, which is part of the nuclear physics topic in AQA A-level physics. So in today's lesson on the inverse square law, we're going to look at describing the inverse square law. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we should be able to understand the different properties of gamma ray emissions, describe and define the inverse square law process and calculate values of radioactive intensity due to the inverse square law. Now, this means in today's lesson, we're going to be covering the following part of the AQA A-level physics specification, 3.8.1.2 alpha, beta and gamma radiation. So to understand about nuclear decay, the first thing you're going to consider is in fact a light bulb, because if you want to consider how light bulbs radiate energy, you've got to consider the particle model. So the light bulb will emit photons of visible light, and the energy of each photon is given by the equation energy is equal to hf, Planck's constant times by the frequency of the photon. Now, fundamentally, you've got to consider how is this different to a radioactive source emitting gamma radiation? Well, the difference is that the, the photon emitted by the light bulb is a visible light photon, and the photon emitted by a radioactive source is a gamma photon, which is a photon with a greater frequency and therefore greater energy than the visible photon. But apart from this, the process is actually identical. So you could consider a gamma source is just emitting photons of gamma radiation radiation from its surface. Now, if you consider a light bulb, what happens to the light as you move away from it and why is this? Well, as you move away from the light bulb, there's a greater area for the photons to travel in. So this means that the photons spread out and we observe this as a human by the light bulb looking dimmer. So we say that the light source has gotten less intense. So it's a very, very important idea to consider. So what happens now when you've got a gamma source? Well, as you move away from a radioactive gamma source, there's a greater area for the photons to travel in. So this means that the gamma photons will spread out and we observe this with a Geiger Muller counter. So we say that the radioactive source has gotten less intense. So this indicates to us that the intensity of the radioactive source will change with distance because we'll note that the photons are closer together near the source whilst the photons are further apart the further away you get from the source. So you've got a greater intensity of the photons near the actual the, the source emitting the radiation, and you've got a lower intensity the further away you travel. So you can see this in the following diagram. So for a light source, the light source gets dimmer when you move further away from it, because there's a greater area for the photons to cover, so the photons spread out. So we say the light has become less intense. So very, in a similar situation, for a radioactive source, the radioactive source gets less intense when you move further away from it. That's because there's a greater area for the photons to cover, so the photons spread out. So we say the gamma radiation has become less intense. So it means that because the photons are closer together, the closer you are to a source and the photons are further apart, the further you are away from a source, that a gamma source becomes less harmful if you move further away from it. So this relationship is only shown with gamma emissions because alpha and beta emissions are ionized by the air very quickly and don't travel far enough for this effect to be observed. So we can see it in the following image here. So you can see that as you move further and further away from the source, that the intensity will decrease because the area in which the photons can travel in has gotten much larger. Now, as the area spreads out with the square of a radius, since it is a sphere, because the radiation is emitted in a sphere-like uh, um, situation, the relationship is not a proportional one, rather it's an inverse square. So you can observe this with the following idea. If you consider a gamma source, well it will emit photons in every single direction so it will form a sphere of photons around it. And the further away you get from the source, the larger the sphere becomes, so therefore the photons can spread out more. So if you took readings of the intensity of the radiation, it will decrease by the square of for the distance from the source. That's because the surface area of the sphere of photon emission is 4 pi r squared, so so it goes down by a factor of r squared. So as such, an inverse square law relationship is represented on a graph via an exponential decay curve such as the following. Now this is actually similar to the discharge curve of a capacitor covered on another topic in this course. Now the value on the y-intercept is the intensity of the, intensity of the source. 
and the graph line never meets the x-axis as the activity of gamma radiation never reaches zero. So in today's lesson, we're going to consider this inverse square law of gamma radiation. So let's just summarize what we've learned so far. Gamma radiation emitted from a source will spread out. The gamma radiation from a small source can be considered the same in all directions. It's isotropic, so you can therefore imagine a sphere around the source. As you move further away from the source, the bigger the sphere gets, so the same amount of energy, the same amount of photons, is shared over a greater surface area. So the further we move away from the source, the less the intensity of gamma radiation. Now the intensity, I, of a source is the radiation energy passing through a unit area per second, and we denote the intensity at the source of the object as I0. So like we said before, the intensity decreases by a factor of 1 over the square of the distance from the source. So for example, doubling the distance from the source decreases the intensity by a factor of four. Um, increasing the distance from the source by a factor of three will decrease the intensity by a factor of nine. So therefore the intensity varies with the distance from the radioactive source according to the inverse square law. So intensity therefore could be considered as power over area. So for a point source emitting n gamma photons per second, the energy of each photon, E equals hf, where f is the frequency and h is is the Planck constant, which is derived from photon theory. So if there are n photons emitted per second, the total energy emitted every single second is nHf. So the radiation emitted from the point source is emitted in all directions, so the distance r from a source that passes through an area of 4 pi r squared, the surface area of the sphere of photon emission. Now we've just defined intensity as the power, which is the energy per second, divided by the area. So we can now substitute these values in which you've just derived. So we can say intensity is equal to nHf, the um, energy emitted per second, divided by the surface area, 4 pi r squared. So now we can simplify this to i equals k over r squared, where k is equal to nHf over 4 pi. This can happen because nHf 4 and pi in this situation are all constant values for the same radioactive source. So this means that k is a constant for all distances from the source. So this means that it can be used to solve problems on gamma emission. Now obviously you'll have worked out that we're not, we're assuming that there's a constant activity from the source as it's taking place. So here is the graphical link between the distance from the radioactive gamma source and the activity of the radioactive source. So in gamma emission sources, there's a major fall off of activity from when you move slightly away from the source and the fall off effect lessens the further you are away from the source. So this is the intensity of the radioactive emission of the source at the Y intercept, which is referred to I zero. And like we said before, the intensity of radioactive gamma emission never reaches zero. So this shows us that the intensity of the radioactive source at different distances can be expressed as in terms of the intensity at the source. So we can go from I0 to I0 over 4, I0 over 9, so on, so on, so on. Now, therefore, we can say that the intensity at different distances from a radioactive source is I is equal to I0K over R squared. Well, like we said before, the intensity of the gamma radiation at the source is I0. This is used because it can account for the activity of the radioactive material as well as the spreading out of the photons in the surroundings. So the higher the natural radioactive decay of the material, the higher the value of I0, the higher the radioactive intensity measured. But remember, we can say that because I0 is a constant, K is a constant, that therefore intensity intensity i is proportional to 1 over r squared. So this gives us our inverse square relationship. So what we can say is a point source of gamma rays emitted in all directions about the same source will follow the inverse square law because the intensity of gamma rays decreases with distance from the source because the rays are spread out over a greater area as the distance increases. So in this relationship we assume the gamma source has been placed in a vacuum so isn't being ionized by the air that the gamma source emits isotropically, it's the same in all directions, and we're also assuming there's no background radiation contributing to this intensity value. So we can therefore write it as I is equal to Ki0 over x squared. Now in the previous derivation we just said x was r. Now remember I0 is the intensity of the source and K is a constant, so intensity is measured in watts per meter squared.
Now, just be careful that in the equation booklet you're given in your examination, the term is denoted as x and not as r. So it's very important we understand that x is the distance between the radioactive source and the Geiger counter. But we don't always need to know the intensity at the source to find it at a given distance. So if you consider two points, a and b, a certain distance away from the same gamma source, we can write out our equations for the intensity at point a and the intensity at point b. B. And at this point, we can actually equate the intensity I0 of the two radioactive sources because we can cancel out the intensity of the source on those calculations. Now, this can be done because the two points are measured from the same source, and so then I0 is the same for both of the points. So we can combine them as as follows. So we can say IA XA squared is equal to KI0, which is equal to IB XB squared, because they've both got the same value of K and of I0. So therefore we can equal them to each other, and therefore you can find certain values. Now this format of the equation is not given in your examination book, so you've got to be able to deduce this for yourself. Now previously we also stated that we hadn't considered the background radiation reading for your gamma ray source, but you can also do that in your equation by considering C, which is the count due to the background radiation. So at this point you can also in add this factor of C in the equation as shown in the following equation. I is equal to K I zero over X plus C squared. And we call this value of the intensity the corrected intensity because we've now corrected it for our background radiation. So let's now look at an example of a calculation involving the inverse square law. So let's consider that if the intensity of the radiation uh, 0.5 meters from a gamma source is measured as 2.5 times 10 to the minus 10 watts per meter squared, what would the intensity be measured 1.5 meters from the source? So the first step you do is with the information given, you can find out the value of K, which is the constant in the equation. So when the intensity K okay, is 0.5 meters away from the gamma source, it is actually 2.5 times 10 to the minus 10. So we can say I is equal to K over um, x squared and therefore use that to work out k when the intensity is when measured from 0.5 meters. So we do that and we find that k is 6.25 times 10 to the minus 11. Now the second step links to the following part that this is a constant in the gamma source emission. So we can now use k in our equation to find the intensity at 1.50 meters. So we can now say i is equal to k over x squared. We know what k is because it's just the value you calculated previously, 6.25 times 10 to the minus 11. You divide it then by 0 0.50 squared to get your answer to be 2.8 times 10 to the minus 11 watts per meter squared. Now this value makes sense as the intensity at 1.50 meters is much lower than at 0.50 meters as the photons are spread out over a greater area. So what have we learned in today's lesson? That the inverse square law for gamma radiation is I is equal to K over X squared and we know experimental verification of the inverse square law. So if we've been successful and learned in today's lesson, you'll be able to understand the different properties of gamma ray emissions, describe and define the inverse square law process and calculate values of radioactive intensity due to the inverse square law. So I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson on the inverse square law, which is part of the nuclear physics topic in AQAA level physics. Thank you very much for listening and as always have a lovely day.